magnificent name of Jesus Christ. We're here today to worship the name of the Lord Jesus. Give him the glory and honor that he deserves. And we want to welcome you to join in with us as we lift up Jesus. We welcome you to worship and praise the Lord. We welcome you to lift, lift up all we If there is anything praiseworthy, 
meditate on these things. Church, the things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly, that now at last your care for me has flourished again. Though you surely did care, but you lacked opportunity. Church, not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. And all together, I know how to be a base, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer in need. Amen.
And as a result of them singing praises unto the Lord, the Bible says the prisoners heard them. The prisoners heard them. When you sing praise to the Lord, I know you may think it's just for you and you enjoy it. But the prisoners, they hear it. Come on, give God a praise. Let the prisoners hear. Let the prisoners hear. Let the prisoners hear. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're so worthy. Amen. We're so glad for each and every one of you. We're going to go to the word of the Lord. Today, man, we're in the book of Acts, the 26th chapter. And we thank you as you are turning to that Acts 26, verse 13. Thank you for all of your support and participation in Bethel Temple during the uh, Bishop's Appreciation Services on Friday night. Thank you for what you have done, gifts and your prayers and, and uh, your blessings and encouragement to um, our Bishop and Mother Nodia Doyle. Amen. We thank the Lord for your encouragement and support even as I was blessed to say an encouraging word uh, to the Bishop on Friday night. Thank you for what you have done and what you continue to do. I just wanted to say that. Glad for each and every one of you yes. here. Yes. Amen. Uh, I'm, I could go down the line and list each and every one of you individually and run up to you and give you a hug. Josh would have to turn the camera because I wanted to catch it all if I run up and give you a hug. But I'm not going to do that. But I am going to say I am so thankful for Sister McNeely. Yes. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Bless her. Hey, Amen. 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 Hey, I'm a woman of God thus far. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mother Phillips used to say, there's nothing, to, uh, well, we would say, there's nothing too hard for God. Amen. And Mother Phillips would gently and lovingly correct us and say, you don't have to say there's nothing too hard for God. Just say there's nothing hard for God. Yeah. Yeah. See, we think of it, we think in that order. There's, you know, easy, not as easy, there's a little bit more challenging, and then there's difficult. We come with all these different words. And then there's hard things. And then there's stuff that's too hard that just can't be done. But for God, there's nothing hard for God. We understand. When you use superlatives to describe, we understand, but there's a point there. There's nothing hard for God, Sister yes. McNeely. Amen. There's nothing yes. hard yes. for God. Yes. Amen. God said, if I say it and I promise it, shall I not do it? Yes. Oh, yes. That was a rhetorical question. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, let me stop because that's not the message. Let me go to the word of the Lord. Now, I have already given you several scriptures. Amen. But let's turn to Acts, the 26th chapter. 26 and 13. And this is Paul recounting and telling about his conversion experience. What the Lord did for him. This is Paul telling this. And he's telling it to uh, uh, Festus, who was the governor of the area, and to King Agrippa. Okay? So he's giving his, basically, he's giving a court uh, testimonial. He's on trial here. Okay, here it is. Acts 26 and 13. At midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining round about me and them which journey with me. And when we were all fallen to the earth, as this light knocked them down, 
off of their horses. When we were fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, God speaks to us so that we understand. Yes. Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Just quickly right there. The pricks are basically goads, or they would use sticks, maybe about four feet long. And as they were herding cattle, whether it's sheep or goats or cows, uh, they would use these sticks. And the sticks were pointed, sharpened at the end. Not enough to really stab the animal, but just to make sure that it went the direction that they wanted it to go. Mm -hmm. And so as the animals were going, you get one that's going a little bit this way, and they would just jab it real quick and make the animal go that way. And you know what the animal did? It went that way. That's what he was saying. It is hard for thee to kick against the prick. And some of those animals may try to, while they're being jabbed right about here at the waistline, they try to kick against it, and, but it didn't help. Uh, that prod would force them to go the way they wanted them to go. Mm. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. So I almost went into another message here. And I said, who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in which in the which I will appear unto thee delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I sent thee. Paul was sent to the Gentiles. Verse 18, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness yes. to light yes. and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Verse 19. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but showed first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coast of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should read Repent and turn to God and do works meet, that means acceptable or appropriate, for repentance. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of the word of God. I want to talk to you again about you are called to a distressed world. You've been called to a distressed world. Not a world that's just having fun and everything is going well. Regardless of the condition they have in their minds, you are called to a distressed world. Yes. Distressed means, or distress means misery and anxiety. It means suffering. It means woe. Distress is also the state of needing immediate help. Immediate help. And a distress signal is a sign that serves to communicate a notice or warning. It is also something that indicates that action is to begin. That's what a signal is. Uh, our technician's assistant that's Joshua. He gives us a signal to let us know time for service to start. And he gives us a signal to let us know that service is over as far as the recording. A signal so that we remember 
the call for action. One of the most amazing memories I have from what has been now, um, what is it, almost 20 years ago, one of the pictures that I see in my mind, I can see during 9-11, New York City policemen, New York City firemen, and New York City EMTs, they were running toward the Twin Towers. Everybody else was running away from them. The smoke was just gagging them and, and, and choking others out, people coughing and running away. And there you have these people running toward the Twin Towers. Others ran for safety, but these courageous workers pushed forward to serve and answer the call of the distress. Later, when questioned about their acts of bravery, each would respond with humility and simply state, that's what we do. Likewise, God has called each of us to a distressed and troubled world. But sometimes we get our signals mixed up and get our signals crossed up. In Matthew 1 and 21, the Bible states why Jesus came to this world, and Paul stated it here in Acts. In Matthew 21 and 1 and, uh, 1 and 21, it says, She shall bring forth the Son, yes. and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Yes. Luke 19 and 10 states, For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Jesus came to deal with the lostness of man brought upon us by sin that has left this world in a condition that can only be described as distress. This is a distressed world. Now, we don't have to miss and mix up the distress signals. It's very important that we can recognize them and that they're clear. A distress signal, first there will be a cry out for deliverance. Yes. Babies have perfected distress signals. Oh, yeah. I don't know which school they went to to learn how to scream and cry and act as if they're dying because you don't have the bottle ready. One of my grandchildren, I didn't tell you male or female, that grandchild was practiced their distress signal so well that my wife thought that the grandchild of a few months old, she thought the grandchild was having a seizure. Because the grandchild, along with the screaming, had tips. <laughs> and, and she found out that the child was just mad <laughs> because, Sister Ashley, the bottle wasn't ready yet. And the child was mad. As soon as the life-giving bottle was provided, the child calmly ate. God bless you, Assistant Tatish. Um, in the midst of the smoke and the rubble, the policemen and the firemen, they spent hours and days, even weeks. They would listen in the midst of that building with their lives actually on the line. <coughs> they would listen.
listen for and run towards cries and <laughs> shouts of help me or over here. They would listen for anything, for any kind of sound. And in Mark 10 and 46, I can hear the blind man Bartimaeus crying out, Jesus, thou son of David, help me. Yes. Mm. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. This was a blind man. Jesus had his spiritual ears to the ground, listening for a distress signal. I dare say that sometimes we don't have our ears tuned to hear the cries of distress around us. It's hard for me to hear your distress signal when my personal distress call is drowning you out. But in Luke 23 and 42, Jesus our Savior was on the cross in great agony. Even the Bible lets us know that even before, in the garden, he had previously sent out a distress signal to his father. He said, my soul is exceedingly troubled. Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass. But he found himself on the cross anyway. Yes. Uh, that was a prayer that could not be answered because God had a plan. Yes. The natural, the humane part of Jesus was crying out. Mm. But he found himself on the cross anyway in the midst of physical pain, emotional distress, and spiritual distress. But his personal distress did not drown out the cry of a sinner. Mm -hmm. Jesus, when you come into your kingdom, yes. please remember me. Yes. Please have mercy on me. Jesus turned down his personal distress signal mm -hmm. and he told that distress thief Today thou shalt be with me yes. in paradise. Yes. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Saints of God, don't allow the enemy to have you so distressed that you cannot even assist anybody. Lord, Lord. Don't let the enemy make you too busy to be a blessing. Don't let him make you too mad to minister to somebody. Don't let him make you too angry to assist. Don't let it make you too hurt to help. My God. Mm. Lord, Lord. Tell somebody and Jesus. say it seriously. Mm. Tell them, turn down your distress signal. Turn down your distress signal. Yeah, they may not appreciate that, but you had to tell them. Yeah. Second, we must hear not only the outward cries of the distress, but we must ask God to help us see and hear the whines and the whispers and the inward groans of the sin-plagued world. Some folks suffer in silence. Yes. Yes. Gotta say that again. Some folks suffer in silence. We must be willing to get close enough to hear the distress that's going on in their hearts, the distress that's in their minds, the distress, sometimes you can hear it in their voices. Sometimes you can see the distress in their eyes mm. and see it in their circumstances. But you got to be close enough to see it. That's why, saints, it's so important that we come to the house of the Lord. Now, this is not the only place that you can minister to somebody. You know I understand that. But when you gather with the, with the other parts of the church, it's an opportunity, opportunity for you 
to be ministered to oh, yes. and for you to minister to somebody else. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Say that. Sometimes we, we see situations and we can hear the way you, we ask everybody these pat you know, questions and just say, you know, how you doing? And we got the answer. Oh, I'm blessed. That's the answer. Everybody, it, everybody has that. I'm blessed. But sometimes you can hear something in that. I'm blessed. See, that's different. That should tell you that there's something going on. Mm -hmm. And you look for an opportunity to minister. But you got to be close enough. The rich man in Luke 16 and 19, he set barriers between himself and Lazarus. The Bible says that Lazarus was laid at the gate of the rich man, yes. not at the rich man's front door. See, every now and then, I just go to my front door to see if there's any, actually I'm checking to see if FedEx or Amazon has left anything on the porch. <laughs> That's all right, you do the same thing too. Okay. <laughs> and I just, okay, so, but I'm going to the front door, see, if Lazarus was laid at the front door, I would have seen him. But if Lazarus is at the gate, I might not see him. Yeah. Yes. Hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Lazarus was at the gate of the rich man. The Bible gives us the impression that Lazarus didn't make much noise. It just gives us the impression that Lazarus whined and whimpered there in misery at the gate of the rich man. He just laid there in pain and distress. Who is laid at your gate? One songwriter asked God, he said in the song, Lord, give me an eye so I can see. Yes, yes. Give me a heart so I can feel. Give me ears so I can hear those suffering around me. And Jesus stated that he hears the silent groans and the inward cries of the distress. He said the spirit of the Lord is upon me and he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has anointed me to preach to the brokenhearted. He has anointed me to preach deliverance to the captives. He has anointed me to preach deliverance and the giving of sight to the blind. He has anointed me to preach liberty to them that are bruised. Yes. Jesus recognizes your cry of distress. Yes. He recognizes it, whether it's an outward cry or whether it's a soft whimper. Thank you, Jesus. He recognizes it if it's just a single tear dropping down the eye. He recognized and he received your distress signal and he is ready to respond to it. Thank you, Jesus. Well, now as I close, I'm learning more and more that God's response to the distress call may not be what I think it ought to be. That's right. That's right. My God. Uh -huh. My God. Ah, uh, yes. Sometimes we have in our minds how people ought to respond to our distress signal. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. I, you know, just like a little child that uh, running outside and they they get, they fall down and they get a little grass stain, a grass burn on the elbow, and they come in, oh, oh, mommy, I'm okay. And like you're supposed to just call the paramedics right then and there, and they, they, they wonder what's going on. Some of us have in our minds what the dis response should be to the distress signal, especially when it's my own personal distress signal. Hmm. And what's so bad, we sometimes question God. Lord, I thought I sent you a clear distress signal. I thought I made it real plain, Lord, that it looks like it's the end of the world. 
that at any moment it may be over with. Oh, Lord, it is just, it looks like my life will be over. Yes, I know it's just the PG&E bill, but Lord, it looks like it'll be the end of all of the universe. It'll come to an end. Mm. One soldier was sent to rescue a drowning man. My wife and I saw this. One soldier had been sent to rescue a drowning man in a swimming pool. And as this soldier, this well-trained soldier, he swam towards the, the person. He had been trained as a rescuer. The rescuer swam and approached the struggling man. And as he approached the struggling man, the drowning man grabbed him around the neck and around the head. And because he was in so much distress, he began to drag the rescuer down under the water. Uh huh. Thank the Lord. The well trained rescuer thought quickly and he balled his fist up and punched the man in the face. He grabbed the man after he had been uh, pacified. He grabbed the man and dragged him to safety. Thank you, Jesus. Sometimes God's response to our distress signal is not what we think it ought to be. Thank you, Jesus. God knows how to handle your distress. In our scripture, God punched Paul in the face with blindness, knocked him off of his beats. Thank you, Jesus, to rescue him from his hell-bound life. In order to respond to the call of the distress, we must be willing at times to confront the enemy that sows chaos and distress in this world. Yes. This distressed world needs deliverance from sin. Yes. yes, God calls us to respond to physical needs yes. with food, with clothing, with shelter, maybe it's job training, maybe it's education, but only Jesus can truly deliver the distress. Yes. In Psalms 34 and 6 it says, This poor man cried, and the Lord delivered him out of all of his troubles. And in Exodus 3 and 7, God told Moses, I have heard the cries of my people, and I've come down to deliver them out of their distress. Yes. The Lord is a deliverer from distress. In Isaiah it says, He was wounded. For our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. My God hears the distress signal. And he has sent Jesus as your rescuer. Thank you Jesus. He sent Jesus as your deliverer. Hallelujah. Jesus is your firefighter, if necessary, yes, to yes. quench Satan's fiery darts. Oh, yes. And God has sent Jesus as your paramedic and your ambulance driver yes. just to bind up your wounds yes. and even to resuscitate you if needed. Yes. Jesus is my deliverer yes. from distress. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm reminded of the words of a song. How Jesus is delivering from distress. Hallelujah. When you find yourself in distress, just call on the name of Jesus. Because the Bible says He's the one who conquers giants, He's the one who calls out kings, He shuts the mouths of lions, He tells the dead to breathe. He's the one who walks through fire. He takes the orphan's hand. He is the one Messiah. He is the great I am. Hallelujah. In the midst of distress, God hears your signal. And he is your healing. He is your deliverance. Hallelujah. And he will answer prayer. Call and cry out with everything. And God will respond. There is no prayer that he 
keyboard here. Sometimes we get covered with. Oh yes, I said it. Sometimes the Lord has to put, He has to use extreme means to get some of that stuff off, off of us. And he'll use a bulldozer. He'll, he'll, he'll bring in a dump truck to clear things away. Thank you, Jesus. Because he knows. You're there and you've made a distress call. God is able to meet that need. And then he's able to sustain. He's able to resuscitate me. When it looks like there's no hope. When it looks like you can't take another breath. When you, when you know in your heart that my back against is against the wall, I'm between a rock and a hard place. I'm out of the frying pan into the fire. Thank you, Jesus. I can't deliver myself. Here's a distress signal, Lord. I'm crying out, God. Oh, yes, oh, yes. This poor man cried. Jesus, Jesus. And the Lord delivered him, him out of all of his trouble. Allow God. Call on him. Put your confidence in him and allow him to do his perfect will. Let him make you perfect. Yes, yes, yes. Settle and strengthen and establish. You have to have that mind to do that. Let's stand for this time. Whether your distress signal has been loud, you can hear it all over the community. Just a few Maybe a hundred or so feet from us, we have those old sirens from the time of the war, World War II, that were, it doesn't work, but at least I don't think it worked. Those old sirens right here at the corner across the street from us that would go off 
and signal to the whole community that we are under attack. So your distress signal, it may be that loud sometimes. And you get a lot of attention. Sometimes your distress signal, you may find yourself curled up in a corner, weeping. <coughs> God is still able to meet your need. And the answer to your need is still Jesus Christ. All the other things that man can provide you, they're good and they're fine. I could, maybe some money might help. Maybe prayer would help. I'm talking about the fact that not in and of myself am I able to meet your distress signal. Only God can do that. Call out and cry out to God. If you don't know the Lord as your Savior, regardless of what you think, you are in a distressed situation. Because your life is not heading in the direction that God would have it to direct, to go to. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through our Lord and Savior. Right now, if you don't know the Lord as your Savior, call out to him. Ask the Lord to save you. Acknowledge, Lord, I'm in distress. I'm bound by sin. I'm trapped. Oh God, I'm in a dungeon and I can't get out. Lord, save me. Save me. Lord, save me. Oh God, you can, you can get me out of this stress. And it's only in you, Lord. Lord, if you save me, if you if you hear my cry, Lord, I'll live for you the rest of my life. With every care, every worry that comes, Lord, I'll take every burden to you. I'll cast all my cares on you. Lord, I ask this, believing you and trusting your word. Lord, even for those who already have a relationship with but Lord, sometimes we find ourselves in situations where we are in immediate need of help. But in God, in spite of the affliction, you're able to deliver us out of it. Lord, let us not begin to trust in our own ability, how smart we are. Let us not even put our confidence in the things that we can do. But Lord, let us trust you that you're able to deliver. And Lord, regardless of whether we think it's small or big, we'll give you the honor, we'll give you the praise, and we'll give you the hallelujah. We ask these blessings in your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank God for each and every one of you. You may experience a distress before this day is over. Usually emergencies, distresses, they don't announce themselves before they come. They just fall upon you. But thank God, remember he who is able to meet that need. He shall save his people from their sin. And for those that are in, in distress, he's able to deliver out of all of my tribe. He's able to deliver you out of that situation. We're going to have more tests and things that we experience. That's going to happen. But every, with every trial, with every test, look to the Lord. And you'll find yourself being able to look back after a while and say, look at that. I remember that. 
I, I remember February 13, 2001, at about 9.30 p.m., coming home from Bible study. I remember driving up to the house and my son Paul running out into the street to tell us that the house was on fire. I remember that. See, I gave you the date, the year, and the time. You'll be able to look and say, look what the Lord did for me. Look how the Lord brought me out again. And what you'll see, you'll see a trail of victories. You'll see a trail of victories. It'll be like teams that you defeated in football or basketball. You may to say, yeah, we beat the Cowboys. We beat the Cardinals. I'm sorry to start with the Cowboys. We, we beat the Cowboys, we beat the Cardinals, we beat the Rams, we beat the 49ers, we beat the Raiders, we beat all of these different ones. That's how we're un that's how we are in the championship. You'll be able to look back on what you've gone through. One songwriter said, my soul looks back and wonder how I got over. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Just yeah. give God a praise again for the victory. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank, you. Thank God for the victories. Yes. It's a blessing to see each and every one of you. We have some announcements for you. God bless you. Being in the house of the Lord on today. It is a blessing to see you here. We pray that you are blessed by the word and been blessed by the worship uh, um, service on today. Just ask that you continue to support this ministry. You can do that in part by praying for us as we pray for you, praying for our pastor and our first lady. Amen. Also, you can uh, give and support uh, to this ministry here in person or online. Uh, through our website, site at btkojic.org and just click the online giving button or through our cash app at dollar sign BT Fresno. Also, just encourage you to join us throughout the week for opportunities to fellowship yeah. uh, for us to be able to fellowship with you. Uh, on Tuesdays, we have prayer at 7 p.m. and that's on Zoom. And then on Thursdays, we have pastoral teaching which is on uh, Facebook Live. Again, these are opportunities uh, throughout the week. And then on Sundays, of course, we are here for our Sunday school at 9.15 a.m. and then our worship at <coughs> excuse me, at 10, uh, 10 a.m. And so we are looking, uh, look forward to seeing you next yeah. week. Also, just, uh, um, you can also give and support yeah. our various ministries, uh, yeah. like the homeless, and other things uh, that we uh, do to support the community. And so just, uh, you can always give and support, and we thank you for those that, that do so. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Deacon Hill. For